Hey, thanks for joining me. This is Ken Ray, Pure Storage SE, based here in St. Louis. And I want to dive into what it takes to set up a flash array to utilize the file services capability so that we can take advantage of NFS and SMB. So I'm going to step through the steps from for, for getting it created, set up, and being able to use SMB NFS directly off of your flash array. So I've logged into a lab environment here and I've got this pure flash array that I don't have anything set up on. So I'm going to go right through the steps. So to begin with, the first thing we want to do is really create the AD integration with the flash array, uh, specifically in regards to um, SMB and NFS. So if I go to settings, I go to access, and then active directory accounts, click the plus sign. This is where it will create the computer account within AD. And I hit create. And then it's basically connected. It created the computer name account uh, within AD called Flash Array 1. Um, so if I went over to AD and I went to computers, I would see that Flash Array 1 is created now. Okay. So now that I've done that integration, uh, one other thing I want to do is in this particular example, I'm going to have some NFS mount a particular file system and there's some users for NFS and if I look over here on my Linux server that I'm going to connect to the NFS and I look at put a space in there I can see I've got a handful of users here pure pure one two three four I can see the UID I can see the GID and within AD I want to ensure that those users exist there as well. And you can see that we've already got pure, pure one, two, three, four, and created. And if I open this and I go to the attribute editor and I look for the UID, I can see that the UID number 1000 matches the UID number over here on the, on the Linux host. And if I want to look for the GID, I can see that the GID matches the group ID number uh, for this particular user on the Linux host. So I've, I've got those created. Now, the next thing I want to do is if I go under storage, I go under file systems, I want to create the first file system. Click the plus sign, we'll call it FS1, file system one. I hit create, and this basically just creates the file system, and it creates what we call a root directory right out the gate and this directory is actually a management point and as an example here I'm going to create two um, just so you can get an idea of, of what it is we're doing here so if I click the plus sign I select the file system that I created FS1 and then I give it a name for this management directory and this management directory is where I can associate export rules to where I can associate snapshot policies to so I'll call this one, for example, we'll call it HR. And the path will be HR. Pretty straightforward. And I'm going to create one more real quick and call it finance. Again, these are just examples. Finance. And I hit create. Okay. So now I've created these management point directories off of this file system. And if I drill down into it, Here's where I can actually set up the policies. I can add export policies and snapshot policies. So if I add a export policy, I select the NFS policy, and we've got some built-in ones by default, and I'll let you see what that looks like. So the NFS simple policy that's built in has a rule set up that basically every client can access it. But of course, I can come in here and select, you know, I only want Linux 1 as an example uh, or maybe I want to put in a range, an IP range or a specific set of hosts. I can, I can easily do that. 
I'm going to leave the, the default one we got. And you'll also notice, let me go back to that, that I've got one for SMP as well, or excuse me, SMB as well. And this basically has defaults regarding which clients have access as well. And of course, I could come in here and change that and, and have these settings uh, enabled for, for the way I want them. But going back to this, I'll click on Finance. I'll select the Export Policy. I'm going to want this one to be accessible via both NFS and SMB. So I'm going to select a policy for the NFS, which as you recall had asterisk in there so any host could mount it. Uh, this is the SMB policy. I'll go ahead and select that. And then I give it an export name. This way it's, um, this is the, the point at which I will mount, let's say from an NFS standpoint, or do a mount from an SMB from a Windows host. So since this is finance, I'm just going to call it finance. Hit add and there. Now it's exported um, to both NFS and SMB and I've associated that um, one thing I haven't associated and I could do next would be the snapshot policy. And I've got one that's built in. The daily one is built in so I click add and now it's going to snapshot that daily for me. If I go back to my file systems, I go back to the directories, I click on HR, I do the exact same thing. I want this one accessible, let's say by both NFS and SMB, and I'll call this one HR, and I'll add, and I could have a different snapshot policy. So if I went to protection, and if I go to policies, I can create a new one. And I could say, um, we'll call it snap weekly. Hit create, and if I drill down into it, Here's where I can actually come in and set the rule. I can say, you know what, let's do one once a week. I don't know, um, we'll do it at 11 p.m. We'll keep it for you know, two weeks. And then you basically give it a name, a client name, so it basically appends that to the snapshot so we know what we're dealing with. So now if I go back to the file systems and I go specifically to the HR one where I haven't added a snapshot policy, I'll go ahead and select one. I'll do weekly for this one since we did daily for the other. And now it's going to snap it weekly, uh, keep it for two weeks, and then basically rotate those out and do it for me. So I've done all of the setup now. I've integrated with AD, creating the computer name for, for the flash array. I've uh, created a new uh, snapshot policy. And then the key thing really is that I created a file system. I created these multiple mount directory points of, of management where I can create exports off of it and I can set snapshots off of it. Now it could be that maybe I don't need but a large one. There could be some instances where I just want to create one. We'll call it FS1. Um, and we'll call it, you know, all file data. Hit create, and then I can just export it, and everything would be underneath it. I can still create folders and directories underneath it, and from, you know, AD uh, and managing that file share, I can go give it the permissions for whichever folders I want to have the permissions. That's straightforward. This basically, having this directory management point allows you to set up different exports for it, allows you to set up different snapshot schedules, so it's kind of neat in that regard. Anyway, you can see that I've got finance exported out um, for NFS, exported out for SMB, and the same with HR. And If I were to open up here from this Windows client, I can see finance and HR out there. I could, of course, right-click on them, you know, map the network drive to wherever I wanted to map it to, and, you know, to go back there real quick. You know, I can also go in here, of course, begin setting permissions, set up all the rights and the permissions that I, that I need to set up for this particular share. I could of course then drive in, create folders and so forth, and then put the 
appropriate permissions for those. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, the key is, is that I want to be able to access this via NFS too. So if I go over to this Linux host here, I'll do, I'll cre that's what I'll do. I'll just create finance if I can spell it right. And then I'll do I need to type in the name properly, flash rate one. And then I'll do the same thing for the HR. Oops. And then if I go over to I can see all of the files and so forth. And if I touch a file, you can see that it's created with the permissions that I've got up here, and that's because it's an AD. So um, pretty straightforward there. Um, this is you know, the steps for integrating and enabling file services and setting it up on your array. Create a file system, create those management directories, and then you create exports and assign snapshot schedules to that and um, if I go to protection you know I can see that the daily snapshots already been been taken place so that's it for setting it up and getting it going of course there's more details around some of this stuff but uh, we can dive in at a later time and hopefully this is useful for those out there looking to enable file services on your flash array uh, one thing to note is uh, on the R3 product line, the latest release of Flash Array, you need to be on the X50 and above in order to do both block and file off of it. So again, hope this was helpful. Please reach out with any questions. Thanks. <music>